<laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Daniel Galician, and I'm really here to tell you that I'm a physicist and that I can read your mind. Now, um, when people think of what a physicist looks like, um, the first thing they want to do is, well, they're not really sure, so they do what everyone else does nowadays, and you ask Google. And, and Google tells you that a physicist looks like this. <laughs> But then you look at the second image that Google gives you, and it actually is this one. <laughs> so you might be slightly puzzled at this point, but I think that I'm more of a compromise between the two. <laughs> um, so so I, I want to tell you how I can read your mind, and I don't mean in this kind of way, that might disappoint some of you. Um, I, I mean more like this, with machines and stuff that look inside your brain and see what's going on. And the machine that I'm talking about is an MRI scanner. I, my research is on MRI. And that stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. MRT auf Deutsch, bin ihr auf Deutsch. So what is MRI? Um, how does it work? And how can it read my mind? That's what you're thinking. So we start with a big magnet. And it doesn't look necessarily like this. It kind of looks a bit more like this, and you, you lie on the table there, it drives you in, and then they can look inside your head and stuff. And so how does that work? Well, 70% of our body is made up of water. And if you take a big drop of water, and then you look a bit closer inside it, you see that it's a molecule of hydrogen and oxygen. Now these hydrogen, um, nuclei, when you put them in a nice big strong magnetic field, they become like little magnets themselves and they align themselves with the magnetic field, with the north-south here. The other really important thing is that when they're in this strong magnetic field, they also respond to radio waves and they resonate with a particular frequency and the stronger the magnetic field, the um, higher the frequency that's involved. But that's fine, we get a signal from our drop of water. But what if we had more than one drop of water? How would we distinguish which was which? Well, we would put on a magnetic field gradient, which means that it's stronger over here than it is over here. So that means that um, if we look at our radio, we've got higher frequencies at this end than at this end. So this drop is seeing the higher frequencies, so this drop might be listening to Big FM. <laughs> this drop's listening to SVR Dry, and this one's listening to Kiss FM. <laughs> So, so then we look at the, how loudly um, the signal is from each of these radio stations. And we see that KISS FM has got a middling one for a middle-sized drop. SVR Dry is the clear winner here with a big drop. And Big FM has only got a little drop, I'm afraid, in this uh, presentation. But what that means is that if we then go and replace our big drops of water with a more realistic object that we're scanning, then um, <laughs> uh, you can see that... Um, If you then had radio stations at lots of different frequencies all the way along here, and then look to see how strong a signal you get from them, you'd be able to make a signal like this. And so you've got a profile of your object. But a profile isn't enough, we wanted an image. And so um, what we have to do is take this time a slightly more realistic object, <laughs> and then take our gradient and rotate it. And if you keep rotating it, you'll get a different profile. And you can rotate it again and get another profile. And it's actually that rotation of the gradients um, that is the noise that you hear when you're in an MRI scanner. It makes all these funny buzzing sounds. And so this rotates. And then you can put it all together and you can get an image. And this is a, an image of my brain. <laughs> and these are also images of my brain, and if, if this works too, then you can like make them move and stuff, because that looks cooler. <laughs> um, and, and the contrast here um, can be changed as well, so you can make it so that the blood vessels show up more. So you can make something like this. Is it possible to turn that light down a bit? Yeah. And so you can see that th these are blood vessels in my brain, and then you can fly inside the blood vessels in my brain. And it's, it's just because you're using an MRI scanner. And, and then you don't just have to do the brain, you can also do other parts of the body. And um, I should say that this, this isn't me. Um, um, but, 
this is the bit where the presentation's messed up, so this is the technical side of things. But it, by the sounds of it, some of you have already worked out what this is, so I probably don't necessarily need to explain that the penis is shaped like a boomerang in this picture. <laughs> so, that explains MRI. But what about the mind reading part? We haven't got there yet, we've only looked at it. So, um, we, we had a brain, and we saw already that it's got blood vessels in it. Well, what if we look closer inside one of the blood vessels? We see that there are lots of red blood cells carrying the oxygen around in, inside the blood. But um, if you're anything like me, red blood, red blood cells, they look um, a lot more familiar when they look like this. <laughs> and, And so, um, the, the really important thing here is that when they're carrying the oxygen, they look different magnetically to when they're not carrying the oxygen. And so that means that if you were to um, use a particular area of your brain, then it would change the local levels of oxygen being fed there, and so you'd be able to see a difference in the MRI signal. So that's all well and good. We can use MRI to see differences in um, oxygen. but. Um, if we wanted to make an image like this, this is a 3D scan of the whole brain, high resolution, it takes about five minutes, and that's too long if you want to repeat it and see how our brain looks different in an MRI scanner when we're thinking about something else. So what we do instead is we do a low resolution image which takes just three seconds. And that one you can repeat lots of times, and then this is this is actually running, although it doesn't look like it. Um, <laughs> because the signal doesn't change very much, but it changes enough to see. And so if you're just looking at a movie of it, that's not really going to help. I don't need to go back here. Um, so then what you can do is look at these signals over time. And so the red one here is the red point here in the brain. The green one's another point, and the blue and the purple. And um, so you look at these signals and you think, ah, yes, I see exactly what's going on. But um, <laughs> if, you, if you then know that... Um, during, so this is a copy of those same signals, but with some extra information, because you knew that during the blue at time, um, and there was something else happening. And then you can kind of see that the green one is following the, the blue time, and the red, the red one here is following the uh, red band slightly. And what's happening is that the subject was looking at this. This is exciting your, the right side of your visual field. And if you look at this, that excites the left side of your visual field. And if you excite the right side of your visual field, you actually change the signal in the left side of your brain at the back, because it's swapped over in the brain. And so the, it's all swapped over and stuff. And <laughs> um, but if you're just looking at it, then you're not going to be able to read too much into it, but then you can apply some clever maths and statistics and stuff, and you can actually get a map of where the signal really does, um, statistically speaking, match the known input that you put in. And that means that um, you can not only see which side of the brain you use when you look at something, but you could do an experiment where, say, you put violin players in the scanner, and you can see that the representation of their left hand in the brain is much bigger than their right hand because they have to know how to move all the little bits here, but on the right hand they just have to do this. <laughs> and, um, and it's even been used recently for um, scanning people in a vegetative state. And people were thought not to be able to respond at all, they weren't even sure if they were conscious. And by thinking about either playing tennis or to say yes, so they thought about playing tennis if they were going to say yes, or they thought about walking around their home to say no. And by thinking about different things, it, was, it changes the patterns of the activations in the brain. And then you can see that through the data that you get from an MRI scanner. And so, I may not be able to tell you what you are thinking, but I can tell you where you are thinking it. <laughs> Which is why... I'm a physicist, and I can read your mind. 